Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I am Inkyugaki and in this video today we're going to learn how to export your VTuber model from Live2D and then how to import it into VTube Studio. Let's begin! The first thing that we need to do to export our file is just to take a couple of things into account. So, go to File and then we're going to look for Export for Runtime and then as a Mock 3 file, alright? We're gonna click here and this export window is going to appear. You wanna make sure that you're exporting your file as the latest version of the program available. In this case, it's Cubism 4.2. Next thing, if your model has physics, you want to check this box right here, this one, okay? You wanna check that one. It says export physics settings file. Now, you do not check this option. When you export your model and we put it into Live2D, there is not going to be a single piece of information regarding physics. So your model is not going to apply any kind of physics at all because you never export them, all right? Now, the last part of the uh, settings, we can leave them like that, we don't need to touch anything. And the export target though, you want to have it 1-1, uh, uh, meaning that uh, the scale of the Texture Atlas is going to be 1-1, one, one. it's going to be the same size as the Texture Atlas. If you lower the quality of your Texture Atlas, or your export target in this case, uh, well, your VTuber model, it's going to low its quality, right? Once we have that done, we can hit OK, and that's what I'm going to do. Once we hit OK, a new window is going to appear, and it's going to ask us, where do we want to save our project? In this case, I'm going to save it in my Live 2D tutorial folder because I need to show you some organization system that we're going to use in our folders, okay? So I'm going to click OK and I'm going to save here. Okay guys, now that we saved our project, these items are going to appear. First thing, our Mock3 file, a JSON file regarding our Mock3 file, then this, let, let me edit the name a second, here, okay. Tutorial Chan Physics JSON file. Now, this is the one that contains the physics information. That's pretty cool. And then this folder right here that says Tutorial Chan dot and a couple of numbers. If you open it, you guys are going to see that here we have our texture atlas. Pretty neat, all right? Now, something that I'm going to do is create a new folder, okay? And I'm going to call this folder Tutorial Chan. Now, in this folder, I'm going to put all these things that we just created. And once they are there, if you're going to import our model into VTube Studio, the name of this folder is gotta be Tutorial Chan or whatever the name is, right? Underscore BTS. Okay, we need to have BTS in our folder so VTube Studio understands that inside this folder there is information of a Live 2D model. Now, another thing, I created this image right here. It's a little screenshot I'm going to show you. Really cute, okay? Uh, it's a 780 by 780 screenshot of, of, uh, of our VTuber model, basically. Now, this icon is not made by live 2 Cubism, of course, you have to make it yourself, but we're going to name it icon.jpg and we're going to drop it into our tutorial chan underscore BTS or our VTuber model folder, right? In the end, we should have the four instances of the uh, Live2D Cubism export and an image with the icon, all right? So once that's done, let's jump into VTuber Studio. Hello guys, here we are on VTube Studio now. Now what I'm going to teach you is how to import your VTuber model. So let's begin. The first thing we need to do is open our menu. To open our menu, we just need to double tap in the screen and this menu on the side is going to appear. Now, we're going to go to the first button right here that has like some sort of person. And this one is going to open this bar under me here, okay, you guys can see it, where all the models that we have available are going to appear, right? In my case, uh, you guys can see that with this little prog, uh, the program is telling me that this is the model that I'm using right now. Pretty cute. Now, uh, we're going to go here to import your own model, right? So we're going to click here, and then this window is going to appear. Now, we are going to click here and open folder, and the folder is going to appear. Now, uh, I have my Live2D tutorial folder where we saved our tutorial chain and this is the other folder, the Live2D models folder. Now, the only thing that we need to do is move the folder from one side to the other side. Once that's done, we're going to go back to VTV Studio. Here we are, all right. Now that we are in VTV Studio, let's open our model menu again. The bar appears again and we can scroll through the bar to see if our model appears, but sadly it does not appear. Do not worry, this is actually really common. The only thing that we need to do is refresh the menu. So we're going to exit, open it again, and it should appear. Here we are, tutorial chan. Let's click here and our model appears. Pretty cool. Now, let's click away and now this window appears. It asks us if we want to run the auto setup for the model tutorial chan. 
And to be honest, yes, I want to do it. So I'm going to click Auto Setup, and this is going to create 20 parameters, okay? So I'm going to hit OK. And look at this. Now our model works. Yeah, fin of the tutorial. This is it. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's not it. I'm going to show you how to make this even uh, better or how to help your VTuber software drag you a little bit better, okay? So I'm going to move tutorial chan right here and I'm going to go now to this settings button, okay? And I'm going to click it top left corner we have a new set of buttons and on the right part of the screen we have a bunch of new settings okay now I'm going to explain the most important ones for your model to uh, run better okay so I'm going to go to the camera settings because they are really really important so uh, you guys can see here that I have my camera settings this is a bunch of information I'm gonna close stuff I'm going to show you one by one so the first thing uh, that we have here it's a mapping of my face okay this is how the software is recognizing my face, okay? Uh, aside from that, I'm going to turn it off for now. I'm going to show you the webcam tracking customization options, okay? Now my model does not move, but we have a bunch of buttons that we can select. So the first one is choose the camera, basically. This option is going to show all the available cameras or whatever the computer considers a camera, right, that you can use. In this case, I'm going to use my laptop's camera, right? If you have any sort of camera like that you plug into your computer, this camera should appear here as well, right? So select your designated camera and then this other window is going to appear. All these options says, please select a resolution. Higher is generally better. So I'm going to go with the recommended resolution and I'm going to select it. Now, then it says, please select Select a camera frame rate, okay? 15 frames per second is good, 30 is better. This is the same thing. The more frames the camera uses, the more images and the more accurate your face tracking is going to be. I'm going to go with 30 because my camera caps have 30 frames per second. So putting more frames, it's, it's not going to do anything, okay? And since my camera caps have 30 frames per second, uh, the webcam FPS limit, I'm going to cap it at 30 here as well right? So now the tracking quality. You have five levels of tracking quality from zero to five. Zero, very fast, but also very inaccurate. Level five is the best tracking, but also supports winking. Now, winking, it's a thing that if you don't have a good camera, for example, and you set up your eyes to be able to wink independently of each other, the problem here is that the eyes might open and close kind of weird. So my model does not have a winking feature. So I'm going to go with level four, the best tracking, limited support for winking, but blinking is much more stable. And I would love that actually so i'm going to select level four and i'm going to leave it like that tracking type face and hand tracking in this case my computer is not that good so i'm going to leave it on only face tracking this means that the camera is going to only track my face but you can use face and hand tracking as well because hand tracking let me show you select and i'm going to turn on the camera okay so if i lift up my hands let me see if they appear uh there we go the recognition is pretty good right and a cool thing about it is that we can set up expressions into hand gestures. So for example, if I make this hand like this, I can tell the program that when I make this hand sign, uh, an expression happens, okay? For now, I'm gonna leave it like that. And I'm gonna, going to use it because, well, it consumes a lot of my, uh, is it CPU, RAM? I'm not that good with computer terms, but it consumes a lot of my computer and it starts to get a little bit uh, glitchy. All right, guys, now let's go with our tracking settings. The first one is model when tracking lost. This setting is going to help us in regards to what happens when we lose track of our character, right? The same at pose, going back to the default pose of the character, okay? That's up to you. Then we have the webcam parameter calculator mode. We have it at manual because we already set it up everything manually before, okay? And then we had the link eye blinking. That means that if the program tracks one of your eyes blinking, immediately it's going to make the other one blink as well, okay? Then we have blinking sensitivity, eye open, mouth open, mouth smile, and brow sensitivity. Now, these ones are really useful, but I'm going to tell you something. First of all, all these options are going to be affected by your camera quality and also the light that you have in your room. If your room is well lit up, your face is going to be more recognizable for the camera. So these setups are going to change, right? Are going to vary. Second of all, because this happens to me most of the time, every time I record in a video, I have to take my glasses off because the camera has a really difficult time tracking my eyes through my glasses. So if you use glasses, take that into consideration, okay? And this might help you make the camera track you easier or not, okay? So let's begin. Blink sensitivity. This means that how sensitive it's going to be the camera in recognizing our blinking. So for example, if I go to zero, if I start to blink, you guys can see my pupils are going up and down, but I'm not blinking, right? And if I go to a hundred, now my eyes blink because of anything. And if I try to make a gesture, here I'm not closing my eyes, by the way. I just try to make a gesture and the eyes close. I like to give this a 70, let's see. Ah, now this one looks a little bit better, huh? Pretty cool. 
actually really cute. Okay, next we have eye open sensitivity. The eye open sensitivity is fairly similar. Uh, it means the home wide your eyes have to be in order for your character to open your eyes. So you play with that one as well. If you're having problems, look at this. If I go to zero, my character looks a little bit sleepy. If you're having problems with, because your character looks like it's always looking like this and you want your character to have your uh, the eyes a little bit more open, well, you can, you can toggle the sensitivity up, okay? Then we have mouth open sensitivity. This one, well, again, it goes for the same kind of things, but this one is really helpful to fix a simple problem. Sometimes when people export their models and maybe even though they try to light up the room, the mouth of the models start doing something like this. Because the camera cannot understand if you're opening your mouth or not. So mouth open sensitivity is going to make it easier for the model to recognize if you're opening or closing your mouth. Mouth smile is the same thing. Look at this. How hard do I need to smile in order for my model to smile, right? Not so much. And I actually like that because I like to make my mouth transformations look happy. At last, we have the brow sensitivity. And if you guys remember when we made our eyebrows tutorial, I don't remember in which video it was, the eyebrows had to be transformed just a tiny bit because the brow tracking is really sensitive. So the brow sensitivity can help you with that. Let's go back to our model options, okay? Right now, here we have tutorial chan. Now, tutorial chan has no icon. So I'm going to click in the no icon button and I'm going to click icon.jpg. This is the icon that we placed in our folder before. Now our model, when we select it, is going to have an icon. And if we go back into the model settings and we open again our menu, you guys can see that if we look here, Tutorial Chang now has an icon and that's pretty cute. Now, movement configurations. Now movement configurations, so this means that, for example, if I have everything at zero and I try to move, my character is not going to move anywhere, right? It's just going to stay there and it's going to move every time I move my head. But, for example, I would like to play with the C movement configuration. It helps our character be closer or further away. You guys can see that. Then also the X parameter is pretty cool because if we place it like that, it can enhance a little bit the movement to the left and to the right, right? Now, the Y parameter, you might want to touch it a little bit only because since our character has feet, it should be standing somewhere, right? And the Y parameter on the movement configuration can break that illusion and can make the, the model be just like a floating thing, okay? Then we have the physics settings. The physics settings are going to, well, help our physics. You guys can see that when I move my hair, my hair kind of moves just a tiny bit. If I want to enhance that, I can go with the physics strength and bump it up. So every time I move my face or something, you guys can see that my hair is going to move more, right? Now, we have wind strength physics, and these are automatic physics. I'm gonna put this in a hand and you guys can see that even though I'm not moving, the hair starts to move a little bit in the back. I have like, I don't know, different thoughts about this because if you try to move somewhere, the wind strength physics are going to fight with the actual physics of your model and can make some weird uh, interactions happen. So I usually have this at zero. Then we have the dragging physics. Dragging physics means that if I drag my model, physics should apply as well. Look at this. I'm going to put them on 100, and every time I drag my model, the physics of the hair are going to be activated as well. So that depends on you. At last, if we go down here, we can see the inputs of the face tracking and the outputs of our Life 2D parameters, right? Pretty cool. Look, when I move my face angle X, the face angle X is the input of the camera and the output is the parameter that we animated before in Life 2D. I'm going to give you just a simple tip here, guys, because if you want to make your characters cuter, especially female characters cuter, uh, you guys can go and look for the body rotation X. So the input of our body rotation X is our face angle X and the output will be the parameter body. This means that if I'm looking to the left, the body is going to tilt to the left. But if we go here, we have the inputs and outputs. What if I invert the input and output? So if I look to the left, my body will move to the right, but my head will move to the left. And here is where we can have this cute effect where the body moves like this. You guys have seen this in different models, right? On the internet, this actually makes it look really cute. And so if we move our head and everything, uh, the body is going to move uh, inverted, right? but it's actually a really cute effect that you should try out if you want. At last, we have in this option, the hotkey settings on the expression editor. I'm not going to go into big details because we already went through this process in the uh, 
how to make expressions, but I'm going to stop one really fast, okay? So the same thing, if you guys wanted to use the gesture triggers, here are the gesture triggers. You just need to click here, the gestures are going to appear. The way to apply them is clicking L or R in the gesture or the plus if you want both. For example, I want both. So I'm going to click the plus here and it's going to say, okay, so this gesture is going to be activated when I use L and right or L or right gesture, okay? And allow mirror gestures, yes. Deactivate expression when gesture is not detected, yes, sure, why not? And if I move my hand here, my character now is going to be angry. You see, if I lower my hand, my character is going to be happy again. It's going to be normal again. Well, guys, that will be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. We finally finished our first tutorial series in the channel. In our next tutorial series, we are going to learn how to animate much more complex things on Live2D. So keep an eye on the channel and I hope you have a nice weekend. See you later, guys. Bye bye.